terms of this uh things going on about the rapture and things like that i'm sure many of you are asking you're asking yourself how can i have assurance of my salvation how can i have assurance how, how can i tell that for sure i am saved sealed and sanctified and and there's you know i, I have that i have that sure assurity that i'm going to heaven how, how can how can this be you see, the assurance of salvation is simply uh, knowing for sure that you're saved. That's that's assurance of salvation. Many Christians through throughout history have written about their struggles in being assured of their salvation, and the problem is that many followers of Jesus Christ look for the assurance of salvation in the wrong places. There's a problem. We tend to seek um, assurance of salvation in the things uh, uh, God is doing in our lives, uh, in our spiritual growth, in the in the good works and obedience to God's word uh, that is evident in our Christian walk. Um, while these things can be evidence of salvation, they are not what should base the assurance of our salvation on. Rather, we should be able to find the assurance of salvation in the objective truth of God's word. Okay? The word of God. That's where we get the truth. We should have confident trust that we are saved based on the promises God has declared. Not because of our subject experiences. You may be asking, how can I have that assurance then? Of salvation is there somewhere where the Bible tells me that uh, I am sure that I won't lose my salvation let's consider um, 1 John 5 11 here the Bible says and this is the record that God has given to us eternal life and this life is found where in his son and he that has the son has life and he that has not the Son of God has not life. So first we have to understand, how can we get this Son? This is the main thing. Okay? Okay? Having the Son is really, really important. And, and let's just see below here. It says in 1 John 5, 13, These things I've written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. Uh huh. That you may know, you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So now we have been told: if you believe on the name of the Son of God, then, uh, my friends, you have eternal life. So let's see the Book of John, not First John, but John. It says something here, which you have to understand. It says, uh, But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So the Bible tells us, if you have the son, having the son, is basically believing the Son. How do you have the Son of God if He dwells in you? How will dwell uh, Christ be in you? He'll be in you by faith. <laughs> you see? So the only way Jesus, the Son of God, can be in you is by faith. Are you seeing the point? Because when you get saved, the Holy Spirit comes in you, and that is the Spirit of Christ in you. So you have the Son in you. Is it making some sense? So there's truth in the word of God which explains about this. And you have to understand that God wants us to have assurance of our salvation. God wants us to have that assurance of our salvation. And we should not live our Christian lives wondering and worrying each day whether we are truly saved. That is why the Bible makes the plan of salvation so clear. 
It says in the book of John 3.16. John 3.16. The Bible says this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. You see, the son has been given. Okay? And uh, how are we going to receive this son? Whosoever believes in him. So when you believe in this son, you will not perish, but you'll have everlasting life. Are you seeing the point here? So this son, he can be in you through faith. Wow. I, I, are you seeing the point here? And also in the book of Acts, in the book of Acts uh, 16, uh, verse 31, <clears throat> it says, And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son, and you shall be saved, and you and your house. Are you seeing the point here? <clears throat> Excuse me. So when you believe on this son, the son of God, you shall be saved, you and your house. Of course, if your household people, they, they believe also, they'll be saved as well. So now, do you believe that Jesus died to pay the penalty? Do you believe that Jesus uh, died to pay the penalty for your sins and rose again from the dead? Do you believe that? If you believe that, then you're saved, my friends. You're saved. That's, that's what salvation is. Let's also check Romans uh, 5 verse 8. Let me also show you this. But God commended his love towards us in that while he was yet sinners, Christ died for us. The son died for us. Hmm. Are you seeing the point here? Are you seeing the point here? The son of God died for us so that if you believe in him, you will not perish. If you believe that that death of that son of God was for you, you will not perish. Let's let's look at Second uh, uh, Corinthians five twenty one. He said, "For he has made him who the son to be sin for us, who knew no sin. The son knew no sin. The son of God knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him." Hmm. So, do you trust in him alone for salvation? Do you trust in that son? Because if you trust in that son, then uh, if you you answer this question, yes, <laughs> the way I've asked you, do you trust in him? Then, my friend, you're saved. You're saved. Assurance basically means a freedom from doubt. See, assurance means confidence or certainty certainty in one's own abilities okay that's that's one but th that's what i'm looking for it says a positive declaration intended to give confidence assurance is basically just confidence concerning what concerning a promise that's what we say assurance is okay so if you're asking am i truly saved my friends you're saved if you believed in the son the son of god by taking the word of God to heart, you can have no doubt about the reality of your salvation. Okay? Jesus himself assured people. And he assured all those who believe in him. Okay? He told us in the book of John 10, 28. He assured us something here. John uh, 10, uh, 28. Jesus assured us this. He told us, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. If you trust in me, Jesus, I'll give you eternal life, and you'll never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. So, what does this mean? It means that there's no one who can take you from that hand of Christ. And see here next, my father, which gave them me, is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. It's like Jesus is holding you, the son, and the father is also putting his hand on top of you and Jesus <laughs> because him and his father, they are one. It's like the father and the son, they are holding you. So who will take you away from there? My friends, I don't think anyone. Jesus told tells you that... Uh, just believe in him and you'll have everlasting life. 
believe in him. Eternal life is just that. It is eternal. It's not temporal. It's eternal. There is no one, not even yourself, who can take Christ's God-given gift of salvation away from you. You see there are people who say, oh, what if I denounce Christ? Come on, my friends. How do you denounce something which you already believe? If you believe a formula in school, a pi r squared or whatever you believe, even if you say, I will not believe it, it is always with you. You will ref let, let's let's think at a point here. There's a point maybe you have ever touched fire. Okay? You are you, you're cooking and you 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 put your hand on fire and uh, you felt it was hot. So even if you try to convince convince yourself that the fire is not hot, <laughs> it can never be. You will convince yourself, but then you will still fear that fire. Because you know it's true, it's hot. That's exactly how Jesus' salvation is. You may try to convince yourself, but what is trying to convince you that Jesus is not real is only the flesh, but you've been purchased and nothing can take you away from Christ. So my friends, can we choose to believe in Jesus Christ? Yes. And when we do that, we have eternal life. You should take joy in what God's word uh, is saying to you. Instead of doubting, we can live with confidence. We can have the assurance from Christ's own word that our salvation will never be in question. Our assurance of salvation is based on the perfect and complete salvation that God has provided for you through Jesus Christ. Are you trusting? Are you trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior? If the answer is yes, rest assured, you're saved. And if you're still there and you don't still believe the gospel, you don't still trust in that Christ, my friends, the chance is always open. The Bible says the time for salvation is now. It is now. Not tomorrow, not some minutes later, but now. How can you be saved? By believing the gospel. There are five things that you need to understand first or do first before you get saved. Number one, you have to understand that you're lost. Someone who does not know that he's lost, he can never be saved. Number two, you have to find the gospel. And I'm going to tell you in just a minute what the gospel is. And number three, after you hear the gospel, you have to understand the gospel. And then you have to believe the gospel and then confess what you have believed. Confess that gospel. Now, what is the gospel? The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It's all about how that Christ died for our sins, he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's what we call the gospel. Christ died for our sins, he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Now, you have heard the gospel. Understand the gospel. How do you understand the gospel? How did Jesus die? He died by shedding his blood. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews, without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. So, why the blood? If Jesus could have drowned in water, electrocuted, or strangled, or anything happened, could there be no salvation? No, because the blood is really important. Why is the blood important? Leviticus 17, 11, the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I've given you the blood upon the altar to make a, a, atonement for your sins. For it is the blood that atones for the sins. So, the blood is really important understanding these facts is really important okay so jesus died and he took our position so that if we believe in him we'll not perish so after you understand these facts that jesus replaced himself you you are supposed to be on this cross but jesus replaced himself then there is when now you believe you understand and you believe and after you believe you confess the first final thing is confess. You tell Jesus that, Jesus, now I understand that you died for my sins. You were buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. I believe, I understand, and I receive this payment of sin, this atonement that you gave for me by faith. 
because the only way that the son can be in you jesus christ is by faith okay so you understand believe and once you've done that my friends you're saved sealed and sanctified unto the day of redemption you have assurance of your salvation okay your works do not give you salvation but assurance of salvation comes through believing the word of God, okay? Believe in the word of God. God told you you'll never perish. So don't doubt him. Don't keep on doubting and saying, oh, um, I, 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 I lied to someone yesterday. I think I lost my salvation. No, no, you didn't. You didn't. Because salvation is not based on what you do. It's based on what Jesus did. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And also you can uh, share the video for others to be able to hear. And understand and also as well you can uh, uh, check other uh, channels that we have on our description below and uh, so that you can also share to your friends god bless you and have a good time